SeaWorld's long-awaited roller coaster has opened and riders have been calling it the sleeper hit of 2022. The two years delayed attraction is won by American manufacturer Premier Rides, known for their intense airtime and generally high forces found in their skyrocket models. Icebreaker is a custom layout coaster built at the SeaWorld Orlando theme park featuring a switch track to accommodate two train operations and four launches to get the ride up to speed. Its signature element is a 100 degree split. This is Icebreaker, a review. When reviewing a coaster, I like to break it down into five categories that I feel make a coaster great. This is an opinionated review, so remember that you could completely disagree and the things that I like about the ride, you could completely hate or vice versa. Let me know what you agree with or what you totally disagree with. In terms of track work, it really feels like Premier knows what they're doing. This is possibly the smoothest of coasters at SeaWorld Orlando, and the visual look of the track itself is good as well in my opinion. The layout itself from above is quite effective for the small space in the waterfront and back of house area that it takes up. It's not the longest coaster, but it feels longer than it is considering when you hit the top hat, the ride time is already more than half over. But like a car heavily depends on its tires, a coaster relies majorly on its trains, and this coaster could really benefit from a total train redesign. The squeezing into rows 3, 6, and 9 proves to be almost impossible and the laterals that are present on the coaster are made uncomfortable by the comfort collars. These slow down dispatches confuse guests and the metal part even whacks guests in the head sometimes when they're trying to maneuver them around their shoulders or take them off afterward. Shins, collarbones, and thighs were noticeably sore after just a couple rides, more so than an RMC coaster for me. Understandably, these uncomfortable spots can be based on body type and height, but most riders seem to feel discomfort on their shins and thighs. Downtime has been minimal on the ride and quality overall feels high apart from the aforementioned. I think that some elements could overall be shaped in a different way, such as the top hat which hits negative G's, then has a bit of a break in the weightlessness, and then launches you into negatives again on the way down, instead of sustained negatives throughout the hill shaped element and that cuts back on the excitement level. Icebreaker's thrill level is very high for a family-sized coaster that doesn't rely on going upside down. It's a high adrenaline coaster that surprises you in terms of intensity and forces. While I'll probably mention the train design a lot throughout this review, it does take away from the excitement when you have to position your arms in a way to make the ride more comfortable. A rider shouldn't have to hold onto shoulder straps or be trying to sit forward a bit so their thighs don't get crushed in positive G moments. But with seasoned riders of this coaster, you'll see it much more frequently than on other coasters. After a few rides, I wasn't focused on keeping my hands in the air anymore. I was focused on not getting my thighs crushed and not having my neck get consistently hit by the comfort collars. That's not fun. So adrenaline and intensity as a whole are excellent, but some of the fun factor is missing for me. Adding an aspect of randomness could also make this a bit more exciting and even something that could be added in a later year to the attraction. Why not have the ride launch forward first 20% of the time just to catch people off guard and have them coming back to ride again? The pacing of this ride isn't too bad. There were worries that the launch would be a bit too slow, but the airtime pops in between really do add to it. By the time you're at the second launch, you already are getting some weightlessness through the humps. The second half of the ride flows very nicely and keeps the adrenaline pumping. Every element feels a bit different and adds to the ride apart from the final turn back towards the brake run, which is clearly just a way to get the train to where it needs to go. SeaWorld dropped the ball a bit with the theming on this roller coaster. A white track would have fit the skyline better and overall fit in with the area surrounding Icebreaker. The orange just doesn't make sense and it would have worked better as a train color. The supports are blue just like every single other major coaster in the park. Ice theming like at the entrance archway would have made for some great head choppers and overall hidden many of the somewhat ugly shipping container like theming that can be seen from around the entire lagoon. This level of theming is at or below a Six Flags or Cedar Fair theme park, which some may find unacceptable for a SeaWorld operated park. The queue is uninspired and lightly details conservation efforts, a custom soundtrack helps a bit, but overall the coaster is an exposed ride with visible mechanics and gives no effort to hide its little secrets and charms. 
rock work or some melting snow really could have transformed this entire area of the park into something to see and stick around in. But instead, it's still a corner that most won't hang out around in for too long. The switch track is a fun and unique element on this ride, and with a small storyline, it really would be something special. It's not super re-rideable because of the shin guards and train design, along with the high spikes of negative Gs, and some tiny layout changes could really help this coaster. For instance, I'd be curious to see how a larger hill would feel instead of the two small pops after the top hat. They had space to put sustained negatives here, but instead they opted to continue with the spikes. It's still a very unique coaster with its four launches backwards and forth, and eight airtime moments before you even get to the first top hat on the ride. Overall, SeaWorld could still use a coaster that has a lower height requirement around 40 inches. For instance, Dollywood's Fire Chaser Express allows 40 inch riders, and personally, I like it a bit more. Icebreaker is a ride I'll ride every time I visit SeaWorld, but my main focus is still across the lagoon on Mako, and the reason that I will visit the park, along with the great seasonal shows. It's intense and I know that coaster fans will be surprised when they get off this ride and they're going to love it. It really gets the adrenaline flowing and it's exciting to have another great coaster in Orlando. SeaWorld Orlando has a winner on its hands for 2022. Icebreaker is original and tense and riders haven't been on anything like it. Most riders seem to enjoy the ride even more than I do. After tallying up the total and averaging, Icebreaker ends up with a 6.94 for me. That ranks it among the top 13% of roller coasters worldwide, which is pretty good. I didn't yet take a poll on Instagram since the ride is so new at the time of this review, but we'll eventually see how you all rated the ride versus others. Thank you for watching this review, and as always, until next time, see ya. What's up?